What's going on guys, your boy Maze, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, me doing the PvP tier list as of November 2023, um, with the Overlord collaboration, guys, we got a few new characters, I'm gonna be discussing all the Overlord characters, and also my tier list, and the actual tiers, and where the characters are ranked, so we did the exact same thing for the PvE tier list that I uploaded yesterday, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the PvP side of things, and covering the PvP characters in general, so if you guys wanna check out my actual PvP tier list right here, I have it on tier list maker, so you guys can check it out, but we do also have the one that includes LRs because we have one that doesn't include LRs unfortunately because I think the base template just doesn't have it so I had to add LRs in myself so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over the tiers like I did in my PvE uh, tier list video and we're gonna be going over the, the reasoning for the tiers and then examples of characters that fit that tier and then from there we're gonna go over the characters that do release in uh, the Overlord collaboration and discuss their rankings on the actual tier list itself so if you guys enjoy videos like this definitely make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already Ready. your boy amazing is on the road to the 40,000 subscribers man i would definitely appreciate it i'm gonna be pumping out videos all of november all of december you guys know it so let's hop in man and let's go over the tiers real quick so the first tier right here guys we have is d tier not viable in pvp so what this means is that you're just not good you literally cannot be used in pvp look at characters like you know mikasa from the aot collaboration look at characters like zaratros where they're like kind of pve oriented look at characters like you know, Jormungand or Megelda, like characters that are made for Dawn and Beast Battle or not made for PvP. So they're characters that are just going to go in the not viable in PvP tier. It's kind of self-explanatory. Any character that you literally can't use in PvP will go to this tier. So all bad characters pretty much will from, from the top down. And uh, there are a few characters in here that you could argue could be above. Like we have Purgatory Bond, we have the One Esnor, we have Green Gulther. These characters could definitely be argued to be in the tier above. Uh, but thinking about the meta and the landscape burn right now, these characters just uh, have fallen off, man. They're outdated. You know what I mean? It's, it's you know, it's been some time now and, and other characters have arisen to, to be better. So yeah, man. So that's pretty much the D tier right there for being not viable in PvP. Let's move on to the next tier we got going on which is going to be the c tier guys which is going to be underused or power crept below average characters so these characters can be used in pvp they're either power crept or they're just underused you know they're not really used too much they're good but they're not like really being used uh in the main meta right now so like characters like ram as like a backland on unknown you know pretty good character but nanashi just is a better version of that character and then we look at like you know um like elizabeth we look at like aaron right aaron's not that great right now even on human team but he still can be used which is the the part that i think you know is for c tier is that these characters can still be used they're just not insane right look at like trader melee like trader melee alt rush same with chad king alt rush right um and also just like him doing his damage uh, creating a shield right um you have like sigurd for like amplify teams you have like rudius for like human variants you have like the fairy team that can be in like chaos battle so like any like chaos battle characters as well that's why i slotted in a lot of the like demons um they're really good with demon king and chaos battle so that's why i slotted like droll and like green molasses and like derriere even though they're like not really good characters they work in chaos battle which is why i gave them the c tier at the very least so those are just a few examples guys of c tier but even like you know green merlin or like keo like characters you would think um would not be too bad or even just like support from the back line still can be run and that's pretty much the c tier right there so let's move on to the b tier all right guys so for the b tier what we got going on here is going to be sub meta or average characters so these characters are going to be usable in the meta a lot more than the c tier but are not going to be staples on their team they're just going to be used as a sub versus another character so we look at like goddess team right now i put the full goddess team in you know b tier at least for the the best variant that we have right now so we have like mile margaret lr liz and tristan i also did put red tarmiel in there as well because you can kind of mix them in but uh yeah b tier kind of just fits these characters that are you know you can run the goddess team and it's and you know you'll probably win a few matches but you're not going to be winning against the very very strongest of teams right we look at like some unknown characters that would fit unknown teams that are not the best for their slot but are still good characters look at like rem look at like roxy summer merlin for like seal, uh, seal teams you look at like festival gother right and then if we look on like the ragnarok side of things we have like you know ragnarok dn freya we also have like scotty right so there are some characters that like fit this build that like you know they're good characters and they're definitely runnable in the meta right now they're just sub -meta they're just not not the greatest right um look at like you know shaltier right now we'll talk about it when we get to actual shaltier's kit but uh, yeah man b tier is pretty much the the sub meta you know if you're using these characters they can still win matches but they're not going to be doing the, the very most pretty much right that's kind of what you're getting at the b tier 
All right, guys, now moving to the A tier here, we have standard meta. So these are the characters that are being run right now in the meta, but are not the very strongest in the meta. So these are the standard meta characters, and they are above average. So we look at, like, the Demon Team right now. So I put the full Demon Team, including Assault Melee as well. We have, like, you know, Demon King, Purgatory Melee, Esterosa, Assault Melee, Chandler, right? Demon variants are really good. We look at, like, Sin's team. I got LR Melee. I got, you know, Queen Dian here. We got Unknown variants, like the really strong versions. We got Freyr. We have Ghislaine. We have, uh, you know, summer freya echidna and then we have irons as well right so we have a lot of really good characters that fit the bill for the strongest teams in the game but they're just not the strongest versions of that actual team right they're not the strongest team uh in in, a, in an actual pvp considering what they are right so these are the characters that do fit the bill for the a tier and then moving into the s tier here we do have the final tier with you know albedo uh hell tier and nanashi which is this is the best unknown team in the game right now and then we look at the best human team in the game right now which is going to be lr Escanor. we have roxy transcendent bond and then uh, excalibur arthur in the back line so you guys can see here that we have the two best teams in the very top which is going to be the s tier so top of the meta strongest characters in pvp these are the two best teams in pvp right now in my opinion i also did put uh, you know, Transcendent Bond up there as well. Um, even though he's part of the uh, Sins team as well, like he's part of both the teams, but I put him in in the very top because of how strong the human team actually is, and because he also has the the viability of being run alongside a Sins team as well. So obviously, this is subject to to change as well. Like I'm I'm thinking we might move Nanashi down um, a little bit as well. But the reason why the unknown team's so good is because Nanashi's in the back, right? That's why I value Nanashi as high as he is, is because with his relic, he's able to make these characters the very very strongest characters in pvp at this very moment so you know like that's the thing with support characters it's hard to rank them on like a tier list like this like do i give you know green arthur this high because of how strong humans is i guess i would because you know without green arthur this team is not performing as good as it is right you do lose a ton of hp right and then even with nanashi so you lose all that basic stats you're not you're losing the gauge reduction right so many things that come into play with these characters that i have to give these characters at least you know the s tier for being you know the strongest variants of the best teams in the game so there you guys go there's my explanation for all the tiers right there now that we've actually gone over that let's hop into each of the characters that came out with the overlord collaboration and my reasoning for each of their rankings so let's start with kakaitis so kakaitis is in the not viable in pvp tier and the reason why Look at his passive right here, guys. In PvE, when the hero uses a skill and deals damage, removes all debuffs on allies for three turns, and for every debuff removed, increases HP by 8% up to five times. This it says in PvE. You can't use this in PvP. Same with this holy relic here, where it says in PvE, increases all stats of all allies, right? You can't use this in PvP. So because of that, it's just a given that we're going to slot him in the not viable uh, at all tier, literally. Um, I'd have to find him here. Yeah, at the very bottom. He's just not viable in PvP. You're not going to be running Kakaitis. He's a free character yes and he's good in pve which you guys will check from the pve tier list video so check that out um he's good but he's not going to be a pvp character so that is why i'm ranking him in the not viable in pvp tier now moving on to the uh b tier where we had shaltier the reason why i have shaltier in the b tier is because the thing is with shaltier she relies too much on the berserk buff without the berserk buff for shaltier she's not going to be doing as much damage as you think right um she gets the attack related stats 50 percent and the defense related stats minus 30 percent and recovers 40 percent hp when removed so it's a pretty good effect when you get it right and it's strong but the problem with the effect is that it relies on you having all three of the start of, of the effects at the start of the allies turn for you to get berserk right you need to get hit three times or you use three cards and then come back to your turn and that's when you get berserk that is the main problem problem i think i have with shaltier right now is that you can't mid-turn proc berserk like you can with like purgatory melee with his like you know his uh true magic you're not able to do that with shaltier so that becomes an issue um other than that though her kid is great right she is, increases her basic stats when uh you know you have unknown allies with you you can apply a bleed effect on your aoe as well which you know actually coincides with their single target as well but that's another thing too right if you're facing like a cleanse team and i've had a lot of runs in you know chaos battle which chaos battle is not like the main pvp meta right now but it goes to show that if any type of cleanse meta comes into play like this character is is in a bad position because the moment you cleanse the bleed that that is applied 
percent once you do the AOE infect because infect is going to be restricting re the recovery related, and you also only get the bleed on all target attack skills, which would mean mainly the uh, AOE skill right here. Um, if you are cleansing it with like a buff card, like if you're running like Goddess team against Shaltira, she kind of gets screwed because then you would have to apply another AOE and then follow up with the exploit card um, just to do you know your times two damage dealt against bleeding enemies and then the times two critical damage on top of that, right? So that's the main problem I think I have with Shaltira. She relies a little bit too much on Berserk, and even if you are facing like a uh, you know a cleanse type you know team, any type of variant like that is going to have a lot of issues for Shaltira in terms of dealing damage. But when you can deal the damage though and get that Berserk off, you're doing a ton of damage and she's able to one shot a lot of characters in the meta you just wouldn't think would be able to get one shot even albedo is able to be one shot right so yeah, man, that's my reasoning for Shaltira. That's why I have her in the B tier. She's obviously, like, not the best character from the collab, but she's great, right? Like, you can still run her. Sub meta means she's still usable. That doesn't mean that she's going to be a character that you just can't use anymore. So I'm definitely going to be, you know, keeping her in that B tier. Moving on to the A tier with Ainz here, guys. The reason why I have Ainz a tier above Shaltira is because the thing is with me is, like, I, I'm kind of in a in a toss-up with Ainz. Like, I want to give him the S tier. I also want to give him the B tier. It really depends on his dupe level because of how how dupe dependent this character is so the way uh Ainz works for you guys that don't know is that he is able to apply a damage reduction effect and this is a death brand so it decreases damage dealt in all target final uh final damage from ultimate moves in pvp um and then the amount is decreased varies based on the ultimate move level so depending on your dupe level if you start at one to six you have two if you start at uh, two to six you get two three to six is two 4 to 6 is 3, 5 to 6 is 5, and then 6 out of 6 is 7% damage reduction, which is crazy. The amount of damage reduction this 7% is versus the 2% is super substantial, right? The amount of damage that you receive is so much, you know, like, it's completely different. It's like a completely different unit. I think the higher the dupes on Ayn, the stronger the usability he is, and honestly, you could even argue him to be in that S tier, but I think, I thought, you know, like, a, a perfect, like, middle ground was probably just standard meta, like, you can run Ayn and he's going to be great regardless of your dupes or not um so even if you don't have like crazy dupes on him he's still good at one of the six and he can still get that damage reduction off it's just if you have him at his complete maximum potential and you have him uh you know six out of six that's when the the damage reduction and then also getting uh like the death sentence off is gonna be super broken for Ainz himself so that's kind of my thing with Ainz is like I put him in the A tier mainly because I feel like he's you know it's a balance right I, I don't want to put him sub meta because he's you know kind of underwhelming at one of the six but he's not right he's not underwhelming at one of the six he's still good but I don't want to put him in the S tier because not everyone's going to have a six out of six Ainz where you're going to be getting seven percent damage reduction per death brand which stacking up all those like all the, the the like the death brands is insane you get so much uh you know damage reduction with this that you can really make enemies literally patience you at, at you know if it comes to that point right um depending on like you know what team you're running and how it can go but yeah man i mean Ainz is great he has the verdict card which does 40 percent more damage for every death brand on the target and then he also has the attack related lower as well which can come in clutch making it so that they do even less damage to you and then his holy relic obviously giving you the basic stats as well like Ainz is just a great character right he, he's really good so i'm gonna give him the a tier and he goes in the standard meta section and then for the s tier we obviously know guys that albedo is going to be the number one um character right now in pvp it's it's true right albedo is probably the best character in pvp right now because of what she's capable of doing now we went over this in the pve video why she's super strong and it's the same thing for the pvp uh, pvp side of the game right think about it like this you have amplified counter right so you taunt and have amplified counter taunting on every skill by the way you have uh, taunt on rank one taunt on rank two taunt on rank three you have amplified counters right which amplifies damage dealt per 30 percent per active buff on self you have 10% attack related stats up to five times every time you get hit, right? You have Nanashi backline because, you know, that's usually what you're running at like the, the top meta for these teams. You have, you know, you have the 20% attack related stats that you get when your stance is removed right here. Uh, or no, right, uh, right over here, right? So you get the 20% atta attack related stats. You get 20% basic stats right here when you assume a stance, right? So much things going on, guys. All enemies damage taken increases by 40% for one turn at the start of the allies' turn. So when they don't damage you, they get damage taken 20, 40%. So you, it's so, so much easier to kill them, right? So you have that effect as well. And then she also increases her basic stats for every unknown ally on the field too. So she covers everything. She's supporting, she's dealing damage. She's, she's doing everything you want her to do. And then I completely forgot about absolute defense, but start a turn, you taunt as well. So you have 
starter turn taunt you have you know basic stat increase for the for the, the actual stats going up you have attack related stats whenever you get hit you have you know 40 percent damage taken on the enemies whenever they don't attack you you get 20 percent attack related stats basic stat like bro I, don't, I can keep going on guys albedo's broken okay and then we look at our holy relic as well which is super good too because it makes her really really tanky it decreases the hero's damage taken by eight percent for every buff on the hero limit of five times so you get up to 40 percent damage reduction on top of what she already has which is broken right and then this card right here uh this damage dealt card uh that lowers the uh decreases the the damage dealt of the enemy up to 80 percent is another level of damage reduction man it's so insane when you use this skill if you get this 80 percent damage reduction or damage dealt off on the enemy they literally cannot do damage to you guys i'm telling you they will do no damage and also, I mean, the card itself will just hit super hard. So you have that as well. And then obviously the counter. And then we know the ultimate where it has Quell. And then also has Crit Chance and Crit Damage, right? So you increase your Crit Chance, your Crit Chance and your Critical Damage for two turns. You have Quell, which is 5% damage dealt per active stance. But it scales up to, what is that, 50%? on on the actual quell so it's just a broken uh character man and honestly right now for for the time being in november right now albedo is uh on the best pvp team in the game right now man i do have unknown rank number one right now for the best pvp team i do have uh humans rank number two because humans can still be unknown um and they definitely could have their their chance as well but i think right now across the whole meta like unknown is going to be the main meta team people are using um so yeah man so that's pretty much the chillest guy this is without lrs so if you were to take lrs out this is what it would look like but this is the one that like i just can't put lrs in so i have the one that i downloaded that has lrs so yeah man that's pretty much it though guys for the tier list let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of the characters that i have on the tier list and also just my kind of my rankings here let me know if there's anything that you would think is a little bit you know uh outlandish or you know maybe you don't really just you you don't really agree with like the characters i have ranked here we'll talk about it in the comment section below man so comment down below what you guys think but that's pretty much it for the video man i hope you guys do enjoy don't forget to like comment subscribe as always if you guys want to see more videos like this definitely let me know in the comment section below and i'm gonna see you guys in the next video peace out and have a great rest of your day man see you later guys